Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and uh, welcome back. Today we are going to be working on creating the head. But before we get started, I wanted to show you my Academic Phoenix Plus webpage. So if you're interested in following along, please go to academicphoenixplus.com and go to the downloads and you can download all of her files for free. Uh, there's a link right here and there's also a link down there to download this concept art for free. And I also wanted to remind you to please uh, sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up for my newsletter, you'll also get a free Maya shortcuts cheat sheet. You will also get really important information about my channel, my newsletter, and you will also get pre-release content. If you want to take a quick peek at what the essential Maya shortcut cheat sheet looks like, it's right there. It looks something like this. Just want to make sure that you have access to all of these wonderful things. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started with the head. So in this scenario, what I'm using is a cube. If you look at previous tutorials, I actually start off the plane. But in this case, we're going to be using a cube and I'm going to make it semi-transparent so I can see what's happening. And I'm also going to be changing the subdivision so that there's a subdivision in the middle. Therefore, I can delete the left side of the head. Similar to the body, you only need to focus on one part of them and then we'll be able to mirror the other side. So there I am deleting the one side of the face and I'm making sure that the cube starts off about the same size as my character. And then I'm going to scale on the side. This is going to start building my character so that I can start shaping it and basic shape is going to be formed. Have you guys ever taken some art classes that make you start off with a cube? Well, same thing with this one. You kind of start off with a cube and then you start developing your character from there. All right, so now I'm adding some edges. I've added two in the center, uh, going up and down on left to right. And now I'm, uh, as always, you want to make sure that you tweak your geometry so that fits the character as best as possible. The second thing you'll notice is that um, I'm going to have to apologize to you guys. You notice I had a couple of problems when it came to the aspect ratio of the video. As you can see, there's some black strips on the sides and I'm not really sure where that came from. I guess when I recorded this video, I was new at Camtasia or my recording device and it's just causing me some problems. So, but hopefully you get the idea. All right. So now that I've shaped the object, I'm now going to go to the front view and start tweaking it as well. So I did a little bit of scaling and now it's time to start tweaking. So I'm pulling out the head and then I'm making sure that everything matches the perspective. And now I'm adding some edges at the front of the face. This is going to help me start developing my character as well as the eyeball and the forehead and everything else. Now it's also really important to always go to your perspective view just to make sure everything's looking good. All right, so now I'm starting to add an extra edge and this is going to start shaping the eye. Again, I'm using reference. One line is going to be the eyebrow and the other one's going to be the top of the eye. And I'm also uh, manipulating the geometry so that it has a better shape. There it is, perspective. That's something that modelers always do is toggle. Toggle, toggle, toggle your camera so you can see every edge, every angle that you have on your model. All right, I added another edge to help kind of sh to shape out the face a little bit more. That middle line is going to be part of, it's going to be very important. It's going to be part of the bridge of the nose. It's going to be part of the, uh, um, the lips, the mouth, everything. So um, it's, uh, it's important that you tweak it so that it gives you some space. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, grab the two faces at the front and extrude inward. And then after that, that gives us a nice little hole and we are going to go ahead and uh, shape it so it looks like the reference eye. So you also want to keep an eye on where your edges are, f are flowing. So for example, the side of the eye, you want to make sure that it's not being pulled all the way to the top. And uh, you just want to kind of make sure that every edge is going as in a grid as much as possible. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the cut tool to go from the bottom of the eye and create quads so that it so the edge flow is better. And now you can see that the edge is nice and smooth. We still have my quads. And when I start creating edges, it'll go around the eye organically, which is really important. All right, going to go ahead and add some more edges. So I'm going to create a little bit more mesh for the eye so that it shapes a little bit better. All right, now we're going to go to the side view and start tweaking a little bit more. I uh, brought in the edges a little bit closer so that um, 
it looks it has a better shape and now I'm developing the nose you can see that uh, I'm getting the skull to look a little bit more accurate uh, compared to the reference image so what we did was kind of fix uh, all the mesh at the front and now we're fixing the mesh on the side and uh, we're kind of making things work making sure that we have a ridge of the nose and everything so that we eventually will extrude I know it looks like we have an end gun, but don't worry, we're going to fix it in a, in a little bit. We're grabbing the cut edge tool and making sure that we can create some shapes. And the key here is that uh, we are going to be creating quads. So you can see that the cuts that I have made uh, created quads and now everything uh, doesn't have any end guns. Alright, so same as the eye, we're going to go ahead and uh, grab the center faces and extrude inward, then delete the faces and then the left, because that's where our mouth is going to be. Uh, added a couple of edges and now I'm shaping the mouth. Alright, let's take a look at perspective. Right now it looks very creepy, kind of like a horror mask, but uh, we're getting there. It's starting to look like uh, a skull. I added some geometry, so I'm going to go ahead and start tweaking the vertices. I know no one's ever going to see the back of her head because I'm going to add hair, but it doesn't mean I don't have any respect for my, my work. So I always want to make sure that every piece of my geometry looks as best as possible. So you're going to notice I'm always tweaking my mesh. Every time I see something new, I go ahead and select some vertices and just move things around. I just want to make sure that the edge flow is going smoothly and uh, I'm fixing the eye and the nose to make sure everything looks good. I want to make sure that uh, it matches the reference picture to the best of my ability. I am now adding some edge loops around the face so that I have more geometry to work with. The nice thing is, is that I'm getting some nice edge loops and those edge loops are going to come really handy as I start developing the character further and tweaking it to make sure that it's nice and rounded. Because when you start adding edges, it can start making your piece look quadratic. So you have to kind of you have to keep an eye on that. So you want to make sure that uh, you're always tweaking the mesh and uh, trying to make it as rounded and smooth. So every time you add an edge, you always want to make sure you tweak it. Otherwise, it starts looking more like a cube. Now that could be the style you're going for for your character, but in this case, I really want to try to uh, keep it as soft edge and uh, as rounded as possible. That's who uh, her character is. So I'm not too happy with the nose. I'm going to go ahead and just tweak it a little bit more and then I'm going to uh, kind of push it back so it looks more like a skull because what I'm going to do next is extrude. So I grab some faces, extruded, and now I have a better, a better control towards the nose. Now we'll have some inner faces, so don't forget to delete those inner faces and start tweaking your brand new nose. I also selected the faces uh, at the edge of the nose on the left, well, let's see, if we're it's her left, and I extruded the nose so that it can get that nice little um, flare, or for the nostril, there's room for the nostril, so now it's actually looking like a nose. Now if you are a fan of anime, they have tiny little noses and some of them don't even have a flare. I don't know, anime toys kind of freak me out sometimes. They have like no nose and their eyes are humongous. Um, I remember the first time I ever saw a Sailor Moon toy and I was really excited and then I saw it and I was not so excited. It kind of creeped me out a little bit, but uh, I guess you just get used to it. It's just a different type of style, but I love anime. I think it's beautiful. But uh, when I see it in like a 3D form or in like a toy, it kind of makes me nervous, so. Um, all right, so now that the nose is being shaped, now we can keep working on the eyes and the mouth. We're going to start shaping it a little bit more. The eyes and the mouth, they need more mesh because they've deformed so much. If there's not enough geometry, it has a tendency to break. So we, I'm always making sure that there's plenty of geometry around the mouth and the eyes. Uh, the eyes need a lot of geometry because of the blink 
and our mouths are can do all sorts of interesting shapes so definitely put some edge loops around the mouth so when you rig it and create blend shapes or deform it in any way it will not break it will look good So this method of modeling is starting out low and then adding edges as you need it. Some people like to start really high. Um, some people start their models in ZBrush. They try to retopologize it and then export it out, but it has a tendency to be extremely high poly. In this case, it's the other way around. You create a low poly mesh and then you can increase the, the size a little bit more. All right, so now I'm working on the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and grab those edges and extrude inward and scale. This is gonna help with to shape the eye. There's always something inside the skull, so the eye, when it moves around, there's a place for it. I'm adding edge loops, and this is going to help shape the eye a little bit more. You need enough mesh for not only the eyelids, but also that crevice inside the eye, and, uh, and also your eyebrow. That's the least you can have. I always suggest that you add a little bit more just so that you can maximize the facial expressions. So I'm adding more edges because my eye is needs more information. And of course, every time I add an extra edge, I'm gonna go ahead and manipulate it and tweak it. So you can see that by adding that edge, it makes her look very square. So I need to shape it to make sure it looks good. There she is, she's starting to shape up. I deleted the bottom of her neck so that I can create an extra edge, which is gonna help shape the bottom lip a little bit more and also her chin. Right now her chin is um, a little sharp and it needs to be a little bit rounded according to the concept art. So again, I'm revisiting the side view, making sure that every has a little bit of a curve to it. I definitely don't want to have sharp edges on this character, even if you don't see the back of the head. this time I'm mirroring the geometry again it looks pretty scary but she's coming along um, I mirrored the geometry so I can see what it looks like all together and uh, just kind of seeing if I'm getting the right shape and the right vertice information and grid flow it looks like everything's moving along so I want to keep moving forward so you'll see that I toggle a lot uh, toggling the cameras again as I mentioned earlier is really important so that you can see where everything falls and you get um, a strong look and appeal all right, that's the first part of the face. Uh, the next part's gonna be finishing the face and then start adding the hair. So uh, keep an eye out for more tutorials. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate all your support. Again, you can download the files at academicphoenixplus.com under downloads. And please sign up for my newsletter. I would love to keep in touch with you directly via email. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.